This is the To Health With That, Naturally Healthy in No Time podcast for big health topics taken in small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor Amy Nuzel, and this is season one, all about the MTHFR mutation. This week, let's talk about something that's been coming up frequently in the MTHFR community, genetic rock stars. And that is, what is the best B12 for MTHFR? Of course, B12 levels have a lot to do with how you feel and how well you're methylating on a daily basis. And you know I'm all about methylating. So it's a really relevant conversation. Vitamin B12 is a cofactor in the recycling of homocysteine to methionine and in the generation of SAMe, which is your primary methyl donor. So it's something that every MTHFR mutant out there should be thinking about. Not only that, every human. B12 is tied up in all of your energy manufacture pathways. It helps with pretty much every process in your body, right? So B12 is a vitamin for a reason. We need it. There are four commonly available forms of vitamin B12. The easiest and cheapest is cyanocobalamin, which is cobalamin, or B12, bonded to a carrier, which is cyanide. Methyl B12 is the active form, or one of the active forms, and needs no interconverting to be useful to your body. It's already bioavailable and ready to go. Hydroxo B12 is cobalamin bonded to a hydroxyl group, which is just oxygen and hydrogen, doesn't require a lot of resources to detox. Adenosyl cobalamin is cobalamin carried by an adenosine, which is also useful in the body, and this is the other active form. It seems really simple to say, of course, methyl B12 is the best for MTHFR folks because we have trouble methylating things and it's already methylated. Done and dusted, right? And it is, for the most part. The issue is that in some cases, methyl B12 is too stimulating, in the same way that taking 5-LMTHF or methyl donors like trimethylglycine can be too stimulating. It's just too fast, a rush of too many good things all at once, and your body kind of freaks out. It's technically the best. You can't see the bunny ears, but they're there. But also, it can feel kind of not good. So let's talk about the forms one by one. Cyanocobalamin is the cheapest to produce, cheapest to buy, most readily available, and easiest to store. It's heat-stable and very resilient. It doesn't absorb particularly well when it's taken orally, and it does require a methyl group to convert to an active form. Also, your body has to actively detoxify the cyanide molecule. Cyanide has a big reputation as a toxin. We've all seen those movies. Uh, But this is a very tiny dose. It's very, very safe. Also, absorption of cyanocobalamin decreases if there are any compromises to stomach acid levels, which is a common problem in the Western world, as evidenced by the number of people taking medications for reflux, heartburn, and the like. For people with severely compromised methylation, like kiddos on the autism spectrum, symptoms can actually get worse instead of better with this form of B12 because it does suck up those methyl groups, both for to methylate it into the active form and to detoxify the cyanide. Also, a small study that used radioactive markers on cyanocobalamin showed that it takes more than 48 hours for cyanocobalamin to convert to methylcobalamin, which, in terms of typical vitamin use, is really slow. Overall, if there's no other source of B12 available, cyano is better than nothing. But if you have another choice, a different form might be better for you. Methylcobalamin is the active form of B12, and doesn't need any interconversion to be used by your body. It is ready to go from the start. It's by far the best form for any issues involving degenerative neurological processes and can help relieve or reverse symptoms. It's widely accepted adjunct therapy for peripheral neuropathy, Alzheimer's dementia, Bell's palsy, and other neurological disorders. It promotes growth, regeneration, and myelination of the nerves. Methylcobalamin has been studied along with adenosylcobalamin for anti-tumor effects and to inhibit the proliferation of various cancer cell types. It helps to lower homocysteine levels and has even been used experimentally to inhibit HIV-1 virus in human white blood cells. Additionally, methyl B12 may help with the methylation of serotonin, 
to melatonin, your body's sleep hormone, and for some people, it improves sleep tremendously. Obviously, this form is a bit of a rock star. For MTHFR folks, if you tolerate methylcobalamin, it's a great choice. But some of us don't tolerate the rapid absorption and rapid utilization. For people who have trouble, it can lead to feelings of anxiety, agitation, excitability, or insomnia. Hydroxocobalamin is another inactive form of B12, and it's the form found most commonly in food sources. It's not bonded to anything toxic. The hydroxo group converts harmlessly to water. Compared to cyanocobalamin, it bonds more easily to plasma protein and has a longer half-life in the blood. When you take methylcobalamin and it uses its methyl group for something, it actually converts in your body to hydroxocobalamin form. So these two interconvert very easily depending on whether or not they're methylated. Taking the hydroxo form just means that you need to use methyl donors to activate the B12. Well, taking the methyl form means it's bringing its own methyl groups with it. Interestingly, hydroxocobalamin can scavenge nitric oxide, which is one of your body's main vasodilators, and so this is not the best form for people with hypertension. Adenosylcobalamin is the other active form of B12, which is the predominant form that your body stores as B12 reserves in your liver. This is also the form that is used mostly by the mitochondria, which generate your cellular energy. Adenosyl is a great form, especially in cases of people with liver issues. There are some cases of chronic fatigue in which people really only respond to adenosylcobalamin. They notice an increase in energy with this form, but no other. This is thought to be due to a problem interconverting between the forms. If you notice a big difference with the adenosyl form, it can be beneficial to look for a mixture of both adenosyl and methylcobalamin as well. Thanks for listening this week, and thanks for the great questions in Genetic Rockstars. If you happen to be looking for an MTHFR community, I can highly recommend this one. Check it out at community.tohealthwiththat.com. Thanks.